Welcome to the vlog, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're doing today is a little bit of uh, uh, inspection and analysis, I guess you might say, of the glass washer, which seems to be behaving in a temperamental fashion. So there's an intermittent fault which is seeing the machine turn off. I think it's due to overheating and I pulled out one of the elements, one of the heaters and as you can see one side looks nice and clean and the bottom is definitely encased in some type of lime scale. So I've checked for continuity, uh, not continuity, resistance. We've got about 39 ohms on each phase. So at the moment this whole thing is wired up for single phase operation. I've just taken off the jumper cables here which would tie together the neutral bar so they're all coupled together and then at the top is one phase across all three elements as well. But this can be reconfigured to run on three phase but uh, we don't have that in the kitchen. Well we do have it in the kitchen for the fryers. I did the same thing for the fries, I reconfigured them to work on three phase from 240 but these, this doesn't need doing. So I'll show you what uh, what we've done. This little fella effectively lives in this box here and this box as you can see there three phase option just there look so this little fellow lives in this box like this just like that if I get it in shot and bolted on it's got a little o-ring in there and all the cables run down the side this is the drain outlet we have an inlet on the side and there's also another inlet on the top or outlet I can't recall probably an inlet and then uh, on the back here we have a pressure sensor which I've taken off as well so if we come over to the glass wash I'll talk about the component parts in here so this is that little pressure sensor and how this operates is when this little chamber fills up with water it creates obviously a pressure difference and it flicks across a diaphragm switch in here and makes a low voltage contact. That low voltage contact then signals to the PCB on board which is in here that the water level is correct. So we'll just tuck that out of the way for the moment while we talk about everything else. This is the recirc pump. So this is what pushes the water out of the uh, hot water tank which is what that metal square thing is and sends it round to the uh, the sprayer on the top now, I think it should go off to the bottom as well somewhere but I can't see that maybe there's another one, ah there's another pump down there you can see that so this one comes in through the top and uh, then this section here this pipe clicks onto the top as well so it is an overflow basically this is the fill pipe this is the main outlet and this is the overflow or steam escape pipe essentially so that goes nowhere but into the tank and if I just pick this up you'll have to excuse the freezers turning on and off they're on a relatively high duty cycle in summer so yeah this sits in that orientation and you can see the outlets and the pipes all kind of line up and then we've got this cable loom here which connects to the element on that side. I'll just pop that there for a moment. So I was concerned that we were having an overheat trip and uh, that was being caused by the thermocouple sensing the elements getting a little bit too hot 
So the thermocouple is this little fellow here, and he lives in the middle of this element. He goes in there like that. And he sits in this blanked off tube in the centre, much like your heating elements on an immersion heater, but it essentially is an immersion heater. And that controls the PCB, or gives a signal to the PCB, where it can control the temperature. And here, without getting too convoluted, I've tested this PTC. Oh, it's not PTC, it's thermocouple, sorry. And we are seeing good reaction times and uh, about 120, or was it 12 kilo ohms, something like that. So anyway, it's in spec. There's also another one down the side here, which connects onto the side of the tank. And that reads the water temperature in the tank. And down there you'll see there's another little single phase water heater which sits in there and heats the water in the um, that is the detergent tank and this is the rinse tank so this rinses the glasses when they're done and the detergent tank uh, cleans them whilst the wash is happening so it would appear to me that that little bit of lime scale is maybe causing a false reading on the thermocouple so I'm going to clean that off next door in some acid and we'll have a look if it improves anything. This element here by the way has burnt out which is why it's disconnected. You can see its cables are tucked away safely here look out the way. So I'm probably going to order a replacement for that at some point and we'll change it out but it still runs perfectly fine just on the one water heater on the back of the box. So let's go next door and see if we can clean this element up some. So this is my answer to the lime scale on the element. This is nitric acid. It's what we use in the brewery to remove scale and beer stone from our tanks during CIP cycles. And I've taken the liberty of filling up a carling pint glass with some of the acid and here we have the element let's have a look at the reaction that we get immediate as you can see so I'm just going to leave that fellow in there for 10 minutes until it's done its work on that lime scale and hopefully it will be problem solved but as you can see there's definitely some reaction going on there and hopefully it's the correct one it shouldn't be eating away at the steel nitric acid's pretty safe on stainless steel and that kind of thing this isn't a soft metal element it's stainless not copper or brass or anything like that so we're fine, we'll just let that chew away at this lime scale for 20 minutes and we'll come back and have a look how clean it is. I may just have to top it off so it gets that, that top little bit. I'll probably just top it off with a bit of water. So while we wait for the acid to do its work on the heating element, let's see if we can find the replacement element for the wash tank. Now here I have a PDF of the Barade 400 spare parts. This is the company that uh, provide these things. There it is. That's the Barade. That's our glass washer, the 410A, which stands for 10 amp. And if we just scroll down some, we'll spot a parts list. We want to be in the tank and filter system, and here it is, number 15. This here is the element in question, and if we could just scroll down a little bit to the uh, catalogue numbers, we'll see it's been listed here as a radiator, 
and uh, there is the relevant part number. So a quick Google search turned up this. Well, actually, it turned up this, which you say, yes, that's exactly what we're looking for, but not in stock. This item's been superseded by the tank heating service kit. And then yet again, this part has now also been superseded by the tank wash element kit. So they're all looking very similar, apart from this little red block that they have. Don't know what that's all about. Maybe just a cover for the electrics. And you balk at the price, as I did, of £46.07, including taxes. Wow. That really is a ridiculous amount of money for just one element. So I'm going to hold back on ordering this because we're running without it anyway. And we'll see how we get on. I'm going to go and test the other element actually for continuity. It is a 900 watt element I believe. 975 watt element. So we should be able to work out what the expected resistance is between the two terminals and then we'll see if that's the result we get when we go in and test. So I've come to this rapid tables watt volt amp ohms calculator and we've popped in our voltage rated voltage for this particular unit is 250 volts it says it down here somewhere I know this is the superseded one but uh, it's going to be the same and then we've got 275 watts, 250 volts, 275 watts, which should give us a predicted reading of 64 to 65 ohms. That's the resistance and uh, 3.9 amps, which isn't big at all really. So let's go next door. Let's pull out the multimeter and let's see if we're getting a reading around 64 ohms. And if we are, then the element itself is not the problem and it'll be something else along the way but I kinda think it's this element causing some trip issues and quite spectacularly I've just come down the stairs after doing that quick Google search I've literally been less than five minutes and our element is clean so I'm going to rinse this off and we'll take it back round to the unit and see what we can do with it. Get it put back in, I would assume. Right, we've got one probe hooked up to the element here. It's rather quite tricky, so I'm just going to touch the other side. Have a look. We've got 60 ohms. That is 60, as you can see. There we go, 60 ohms. So it looks like that element is good. So I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to clean it and I'm going to reconnect it and hopefully we'll have a fully functioning glass wash when we come back. I'm just going to have to undo that nut, just holding it in there. It's just like a washing machine element and this should slide right on out. And here she is as crusty as the last one in fact a lot worse so I'm going to take this next door and give it exactly the same treatment and while I'm at it we're going to take the filter we'll give that some treatment as well and this is the base uh, like the debris guard that goes inside to stop your debris going into your rinse water because you can use this for washing um, plates and stuff, but we don't. And there should be another piece of metal that I took off yesterday somewhere, which I'm going to have to find off camera. But we're going to have four things this time to de. What's it called? Lime scale. Bloody, why do I forget things like that? So, glass wash back in position, everything's been cleaned and she works like a treat no problems no intermittent tripping and we've even got 
the back element working again. So I think that is what you call friggin' good repair. See you in the next one.